about to change forever. In 2024, it will be going from a paper and pencil test to a digital adaptive test. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this new test so that you can get the score that you want to get. So first things first, just because it's digital does not mean you can take it at home. That would be stupid. You still have to go into a testing center to take the test. However, the test is getting shorter. It's going all the way from three hours down to two hours and 14 minutes, which is great. The reading and writing sections have been combined into the aptly named reading and writing section. They're just so creative at College Board. And the two math sections have been combined into a single math section where you have a Desmos calculator on hand the entire time. And that is a complete game changer, but we'll get into that in a bit. Each section is divided into two modules. Each reading and writing module is 27 questions in 32 minutes, so 71 seconds a question, and each math module is 22 questions in 35 minutes, so 95 seconds per question. This is more time per question than you get on the paper SAT. But here's what's important. The first module of each section is going to be a range of questions that everybody gets. They're going to be in a randomized order, so it's harder to cheat, but everyone will get the same set of questions on the first module. Then the second module will be designed based on how well you did in the first module. So if you did well in the first module, the second module will be harder. If you did poorly on the first module, the second will be easier. And this has a couple of implications. First, it means you'll kind of know how well you did on the first module by the time you get to the second, right? Like if you get to the second module and your first question is, what is 20% of 100? Now is the time to panic because you probably bombed that first module. And the other question is, how is this supposed to be scored? Because some students are getting harder problems than other students. Now, of course, College Board's extremely vague on how they're actually gonna score this test. So I took it upon myself to get the software that the digital SAT uses and run some experiments. The first thing I did was butcher the reading and writing section because I simply don't care about it. Then I took the math section just as I would as an SAT math tutor, free tutoring at learnsatmath.com, by the way. I got a perfect score on the first module, but then I got two problems wrong on the second module. Despite that though, I still ended with an 800 on the test. I wanted to see what the cutoff was for a perfect score, so I took the test again, this time missing three questions, and I got a 780. So you have to get a perfect score on module one, and then you can afford to miss about two questions on module two. But generally speaking, you don't need to get every single question correct to get a perfect score. Also note that this doesn't work the other way around. I tried the reading and writing section, missing two problems on the first module and getting a perfect on the second, and I got a 760 from that. So you have to get a perfect on module one. So clearly you're penalized more for missing easy problems than hard problems, which makes sense. But I wanted to see exactly what extent this is true. So like any normal person would do, I took the test two more times. The first time I got everything wrong on module one and a perfect score on the easiest possible module two. It was very easy, trust me. The second time I took the test, I did the opposite thing. I got a perfect score on module one and then got everything wrong on the very hard module two. Now let's play a game. What do you think my score was for each of these tests? Place your bets now. Okay, moment of truth. The score for test A was a 410. God, and the score for test B was a 560. That is a big difference. Remember, both of these tests got the same number of problems right, it just depends which module. So the big takeaway from these experiments is that module one can and will completely screw over your SAT score. It's only 22 questions, and yet it is setting a hard floor or ceiling on the rest of your test. So now let's talk about content changes on the digital SAT. The biggest change of all on the reading and the writing and the math is that the test is going away from long passages and word problems and transitioning to short, isolated questions. This is most impactful in the reading section because the 85 line passages are completely gone and are replaced with shorter paragraphs and sentences that you have to fill in the blanks for. It's still a lot of the same skills. Sentence completion, identifying purpose, analyzing data, grammar, structuring sentences. However, now you're missing the questions that would only make sense with longer passages like questions about characters or those two-part questions where you use the evidence in one question to support the answer of the previous one. Now, because I'm an SAT math tutor, that's pretty much all I can speak to about the reading section and how it's changing, but I do have some strong thoughts about the math section, so let's get into that. On the math section, the questions are pretty much the same as they were before. The only piece of content that's actually getting removed is imaginary numbers and Good riddance, I say. Why were those on the test in the first place? The other change is just like how in the reading and writing, the problems are getting shorter and more concise, so are the word problems on the math SAT. Word problems are also making up a smaller proportion of questions on the test. The new breakdown is 35% algebra, 35% advanced math, that's systems of equations, quadratics, exponentials, rationals, etc. 
15% problem solving and data analysis, that's your word problems, and 15% geometry and trig. And by the way, trig does not mean unit circle and polar coordinates, it's Pythagorean theorem, Sokoto, the stuff you probably learn in geometry. Okay, here's the really big change. You get a Desmos calculator for the entire test. For those of you that haven't used Desmos, you can go to desmos.com slash calculator and play around with it because that is literally what you will get on the digital SAT. It can do arithmetic, yes, but it is also a straight up graphing calculator. Let me show you why this is crazy. Take systems of equations, for example. This is something that will literally show up on every SAT. Previously, you would need to solve these problems by hand using substitution or more commonly elimination. With Desmos, however, you just type in both equations and the point of intersection is your solution to the system. You can even solve regular algebra problems like this. Just graph each side of the equation and then the point of intersection is your solution. If you get a function that has a mystery constant that you need to solve for, you can plug in that equation into Desmos and then use the slider to guess and check different values for that mystery constant. In fact, you can graph pretty much everything. X and Y intercepts, graph it. Number of solutions, graph it. Points of intersection, graph it. Minimum value, graph it. But wait, there's one other thing that's really funny. If you need to calculate the mean or median, simply type in the word mean, input your data, and then Desmos will automatically calculate it for you. And I bet 99% of people are gonna take the test without actually knowing that's a feature. So be glad you're watching this video and you're in the 1%. I'd estimate that about 25% of problems on this test should be solved with Desmos, and about half of them can be if you really wanted to. You're still allowed to bring your own calculator, but don't even bother, Desmos is better in every way. Another change that's pretty insignificant, but I still feel like I should mention, is that the free response questions no longer limit you to four boxes, because that would be stupid. And last but not least, the whole reason this test is going digital is so that College Board does not need to collect 1.7 million test booklets before they can get you back your score. The second you hit the submit button, College Board knows your score. And College Board takes pride in this achievement. They're saying you will get your score back in days instead of weeks. But why is it still taking days to send you the score that's calculated instantly? David, what could possibly be the reason for this? Anyways, if you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe. I'm currently exclusively making content on the SAT math. So if you subscribe to this channel, you will get all the information that you need to completely obliterate this SAT. And if you're interested in private tutoring, head over to learnsatmath.com. I'm offering a free trial session. You can't get better than that. I assure you my tutoring is phenomenal. All my information is right there on my website. And of course, good luck studying.